Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well look at the state of that and it's pouring down, it's windy and it's cold and that means I won't be using the 6 Series this weekend and I haven't used it all week either because I've been in the 8 Series. And at this point the battery is going to start discharging to a point where we might start damaging it. So I need to charge it. And from the user manual we know you can't charge from anywhere apart from under the bonnet. But there is a method and I'm going to show you how it's done and makes charging the car much more convenient. In fact, there's a space in the boot for the charger that looks like it was meant to go there. So this is all I have to do if I need to put the car on charge. Got an extension lead hidden away in the garden, somewhere dry. Plug it in, that's it, we're on charge. Back into the warm again. Oh, it's awful out there today. Yes, the reason you can't charge from anywhere apart from under the bonnet is because of the intelligent battery system. And it's a device that's clamped to the negative terminal of the battery that measures current going in and out and a lot of other things like battery temperature. And if you charge from the terminals of the battery, you bypass it and then it's going to confuse the system altogether and you may get overcharging. And the reason we may overcharge the battery is because the IBS sensor communicates with the DME, which is the engine's main computer. The DME also controls the output current from the alternator. Now, if the IBS and DME didn't see the current go into the battery, it will presume that the battery has little charge. And when the car's next started, the DME will command the alternator to put out the maximum current to recharge the battery as quickly as possible. Now, with a fully charged battery, that can damage it. So it is imperative that if we charge the battery, it must be done through the IBS, so that the IBS and the DME controls the alternator to put the right current out for a fully charged battery. Fortunately, this is quite easy because the positive terminal under the bonnet connects directly to the battery positive terminal and the negative under the bonnet connects to the chassis of the car. The chassis of the car is then connected via the IBS to the negative terminal of the battery. So if we connect our charger to the positive terminal of the battery and the chassis of the car, then the current is measured by the IBS. And I'll show you how to do that. And I've had this system on my car for probably about four years now, and I haven't had any problems at all. Right, well I'll show you what we got in here and how it's all wired up. Got the SeaTech Charger MX5 5.0, which is quite sufficient enough to charge up this huge battery here. And it's simply just wired through here under the positive terminal through a connector so I can disconnect it if I want. And it's simply wired to the positive terminal here and that's what I did is I fitted a smaller nut underneath here, fitted the terminal and then fitted a lock nut above it. And the reason I did that is you can't put too much pressure on these little eyes because they just disintegrate if you try and squash them down too much. And we needed enough uh, pressure on the terminal to hold it on properly. So that's fine, that's just connected to there and that can just stay covered up. And the negative goes to the hold down for the battery, which is obviously connected to the chassis. And we can see what happens here with the IBS. We have the IBS connector here, negative terminal of the battery. So the power through the negative terminal goes through the IBS. Currents measured, voltage is measured across here to the positive side. And the negative terminal actually just connects to the chassis just under here. So the jump points at the front of the car connect to directly to the positive cable and connect to the chassis under the bonnet. And here we come back out from the chassis connector to the battery. So we know if we connect to the chassis for the negative, which I do here, and positive to the positive terminal, then the current is being measured through the IBS. So we're putting current through from the positive terminal 
through the battery, back through the IBS to the chassis and we take our negative from the chassis. So the IBS will measure all the current that we're putting into the battery and will be aware that we've actually charged the battery and that's important because we don't want overcharging. Right, to get the connector block, this here, past the positive cable, all we need to do is undo this large fixing here. And the positive cable is clipped uh, to the chassis just about here. And so undoing that gives us enough room to lift that up, lift the cable up, make a funny gronky noise, there we go. That gives us sufficient room to get the connector under and then we can wiggle it round and over to there. Now, as I said on my website, this is the only thing I had problem with because I had actually had it fitted in this position here. And what happens is this bit of foam here actually pressed on the uh, little button on the side. And if that presses, it undoes the connector. Uh, unfortunately, only sort of half undid it and then it got rather hot and failed. So the charge didn't actually work. And it's after a while I noticed it wasn't working. And I just realised that cable's a problem, squashed the terminals a bit, put it back together, and that was fine. But yeah, that's, a sim that's about as hard as it gets, is just undoing that. Just gives you a bit more room. Um, the terminals themselves, you can see how it's done there onto the hold down. They're slightly, the diameter of the centre hole is slightly too small. So they have to be filed out. Don't try and drill them, they just come apart. That's what I found with one set. So you have to drill out holes in them so they can fit round the hole down and they'll also fit here. So this I had to drill the hole slightly bigger in this one. Well, we've more or less been through the whole installation, but I will go through it again just to bore you even more. There's the cavity the charge is fitting into. Lots of room underneath to put any excess wire underneath it to keep it all neat and tidy. And it really does hold it in place really well. Um, it looks like it's made for it. I've no idea if it was or not. So the first run of wire, it does come up against a sort of lump of foam. And we have to chop a bit of that out just right next to the charger. And the best way to do that was a nice sharp scalpel and just chop enough down so that you can get the run of wire through there. I can't remember if there's any other wires in there. So obviously don't cut through those because that's probably not going to do you any favours. So yeah, and the other problem, as we've already discussed, is the positive lead from the battery. But it's got enough give on it. And um, in the UK, we have massive plugs, massive three pin plugs, much bigger than anything else in the world that I've seen. And uh, yeah, if I can get a UK three pin plug underneath there, you should be able to get anything under there. So it's really just a case of pushing it up. Hear the horrible crackling noise of the clamp as it opens up. But don't be perturbed. I mean, that's just the clamp and the positive terminal go positive lead goes back into the clamp with no problems at all. And uh, yeah, just route the wires round. Once you've got it under there, you can route them back through the channel uh, to make it nice and neat. Uh, the MX-5 comes with two sets of leads. You've got the I ones, which we're using and a crocodile clip ones like I use on the E31 for its dual batteries. And as we said earlier on, the eyes, is, was the internal diameter of them is just slightly too small for that. I think it's a six mil stud on the battery and probably a six on the hold down as well. So file them out and not drill them because it does tear them apart. And as I said, I didn't disturb the battery terminal. I just tightened it up slightly, the nut which is underneath this terminal here. And that holds the terminal to the battery post nice and tightly. And then I fitted the eye over and fitted a, another nut on top of it, a locking nut, although it probably won't much, make much difference what you fit on there. Um, and I also noticed that it hasn't easily even reached the nylon part of it, so it probably isn't doing any good, but it hasn't come undone, so that's fine. And with that big lump of plastic under there, it does make it a bit tricky to put the little cover back over the top of it, but it sort of hangs on just about 
and looks really neat. It's all hidden underneath the covers anyway. And the negative, we stick on the hold down and all we do is undo it, which is either a posi drive or a 10 mil. And we remove that O-ring, uh, remove the clamp, fit the eye on the shaft, refit the clamp, refit the O-ring and tighten it back up on the battery. Don't do it up too tight or you may damage the eye, but you need to put obviously enough tension to hold the battery in place, although it's not probably going to go anywhere. And that's the DC wiring all done. Really just a case of tidying everything up, making sure you're happy with all the wire runs and uh, then sort of tie wrap everything in place so it stays there. Obviously avoiding the obvious mistake that I made here, putting it in a place which actually squashed the orange button and disconnected the connector pair enough so it got a bit hot. Uh, it all survived that okay and it sort of moved towards me a bit further now. And that's been working fine for another three years, so that's no problem at all. Yeah, just a case of tie wrapping everything to make it look nice and neat and tidy. And um, the MX-5 is an excellent charger. Well, it's more than a charger. It's a, uh, it's a battery conditioner. And it constantly checks the condition of the battery. And if it feels that the battery is becoming sulfated, it will use a program that will try and uh, remove the sulfur as much as possible but once you've got a dead battery you've got a dead battery but uh, as long as you keep it charged up like this it's uh, never going to die it's going to last another 10 years or so um, yeah but it's a very good charger but it's only 5 amp of course so it's not an emergency charger it won't do things quickly for you it's really meant for long term charging and conditioning of the battery and this is me pretending I've kept that in a dry place, but by the look of it, it's got rather wet. And of course, we have man electricity over in the UK, 240, 250 volts. Yet we don't want to mess with that stuff, that's for sure. Give you a nasty jolt. Yeah, so it just makes the whole thing so much more convenient. I just sort of, even the pouring down rain days like this, you know, quick, quickly whiz out, undo the car bung the extension lead in and it's on charge and I can go back into the warm perfectly happily and I do the same for the E31 and that's got two batteries in parallel so we're trying to charge up about 150 amp hour with it but uh, it works just the same well thanks very much for watching I'll bring out a new video soon and I'll see you soon